Alright, howdy gents, welcome to Warning Order or Warno. This is a new game being developed by the same devs as Wargame and the Steel Division series, Eugen Systems. This game is set initially, anyway, in Europe in 1989. So I've added some timestamps to this video if you want to skip to certain parts. Later on we will discuss some of the screenshots and the Steam Store page, as well as take a look at some secret developer information I managed to pick up from the Discord regarding modding support, naval combat, and paratroopers. There's a little bit of starting information I think we should get out of the way before we jump into the main body of this video. The game will have an early access release scheduled for January of 2022. It's basically just a month away. This will include two factions, the US and the Soviet Union, playable in skirmish mode. You can play 1v1 to 4v4s and then 10v10s, kind of think like war game and still division game sizes. I don't think they'll have 6v6s or 8v8s, so they'll probably 1v1 to 4v4s and then also the separate 10v10 game mode. You can play this against both AI and or human opponents, and obviously stuff like army general campaigns, scripted operations, and more factions will come down the line after its initial early access release. So the story goes that hardline communists have overthrown the Gorbachev government. Now the Warsaw Pact and NATO face each other as conflict is imminent. The only thing left to do now is wait for the warning order, or Warno, to begin World War III. That's where the name comes from. Thus far, they have confirmed six nations to be available in Warno at some point. Like I said, the US and the Soviets will be available right from the start at the beginning of the early access, with the United Kingdom, France, and West Germany rounding out the rest of NATO. And on the pact side of things, the Soviets will be joined by East Germany. Personally, I wouldn't be very surprised if we saw more facts factions over time, especially if you see Red Dragon, they added a lot of factions as DLC, and there being a lot of factions like Poland or Czechoslovakia, just to name a few, that could add a lot of unique equipment, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some more. 600 units will be available in the game, I assume this is not just between the US and the Soviets from the start, but this counts the United Kingdom, France, and the, both Germanys as well, and as this tradition, you can check these out in the in-game armory much like war game or steel division so in war game you made decks depending on the nation and then you specialized for example towards motorized or airborne in steel division you made decks based on military formations like the 101st airborne division or the 12th ss panzer it sounds like in war now they're going for the steel division type of system where here you'll for example select the US 3rd Armored Division and then build a deck based on that and you won't be picking the entire US as a faction and then specializing within that. Something I'm personally really excited for is the devs bringing back Army General campaigns from Steel Division 2 here in Warno. These were honestly some of my personal favorite additions to Steel Division 2, especially after they allowed us to play it both in a PvP setting or with multiple people co-oping their way through those campaigns. Honestly, I would not be surprised if we will end up seeing more Army General campaigns released, either as DLC or as free DLC over time, just like they did with Steel Division 2. They also mentioned scripted operations, which will tell more of a story. Now, I'm not really sure what to expect from this, but it's good to keep in mind that you also made Ruse way back in the day, and in my opinion that game had a pretty decent storyline and also a pretty alright campaign, so I'm hoping that they can make these scripted operations sort of feel like the way they made Ruse feel back in the day, because I think they did a pretty good job of it. A thing that is to return from Steel Division 1 and 2 is off-map artillery. The one of developers in their Discord after the trailer was released did mention that they're not really sure on how to implement it in a way, because I feel like a lot of people were very very divided on off-map artillery being fun and engaging slash fair because it's something you can't counter unless you kill the, you know, the spotting unit. So they weren't 100% sure on how they were going to implement it yet. Now there's a few screenshots I'd like to take a little bit of a closer look at from their Steam Store page. So I just grabbed two of these screenshots that I think really showcase some of the scale you can expect from this game. I believe actually in this one we can see the tower that you fly by in the opening shots of the trailer in the back right of this picture. 
We can also see some pretty tall buildings in the back. They look to be a little too tall to be an industrial grain silo or something like that that we see in the foreground here. So perhaps it's a small city with some taller office buildings. I wonder if a building's height will matter at all. I know it didn't really matter in Wargame, but it definitely mattered in Steel Division with the line of sight of things. It'll be interesting to see how this will play out in Warno. And the difference between this first picture and the second picture, personally, I think is pretty huge. We have a whole industrial facility with lots of cover and perhaps even exploding fuel tanks mixed in. This does seem like a nightmare to take on some entrenched infantry. Here we can take a look at one of the stat cards, much like you'd see in Wargame or Steel Division. Here we see the AH-1F Cobra, which appears to be in the anti-tank helicopter category under unit value B. And we'll talk about this unit value thing in a second. A big change to note is it seems fuel is back. After not having been a necessary thing to keep track of in Civil Division 2, it's back here for Warno, and it seemed the community on Discord was really divided on fuel making it back from Wargame or a Dragon. Now, hopefully the German weasel vehicles can actually make it to the front before they run out of fuel, or the Japanese tanks if they ever add Japan. An interesting thing to mention here is that this helicopter specifically seems to be able to engage aircraft and not just helicopters with its 20 millimeter chain gun, which I don't think was possible before in Wargame games. Some new icons of Above the weaponry do seem to showcase some of the traits of the weapons. For example, if the vehicle has to be stopped while firing or any things like post-launch guidance, for example, on this tow launcher. It's nice that now information like that is a little bit more visible at a glance in icon format versus having to read fire and forget stationary stuff like that that we saw in Wargame Red Dragon. Now it seems that combat units are back and will be needed to lock down points much like Wargame. You can see proof of this on the picture they show of the gameplay where we can see a command Abrams having locked down this point. We can actually dissect this image a little bit more. In the top left we can see the button used to open your deck. This is where you buy more units, tanks, infantry, aircraft, etc. to deploy into battle. In this particular screenshot, it's obviously some sort of a showcase screenshot, we can see the player has 10,000 points with a zero point income. Now next to that we see a little 47 in a circle. I guess this is where they're going more for the Steel Division type thing where you get income every minute and not like War Game where you get income every couple of seconds. Next to that we have what looks to be maybe the objective points with the friendly team owning two, the enemy team owning zero out of a total of perhaps 15. We'll have to find more out about that at a later point. And the lines next to that must represent the total points for the blue and the red team, but because it's a showcase screenshot, it appears to be at zero for both teams. Then we see the speed controls for single player on the far right, so you can play it in slow-mo or fast if you're playing a game by yourself. We then see the air column tab that I swear used to be in the bottom left in Wargame and Civil Division. Personally, I hope we can move or change the AI around. It is really busy in the top right, also with this very blue-ish minimap, which kind of seems hard to discern stuff on. Now, this picture gives quite a bit of interesting information. If we go back to the Cobra picture, we can see a little anti-tank picture next to the helicopter symbol. And this is shown multiple times here on the Apaches, on the A-10s, and on the M901 ITVs. I think this is a quick way to see what a unit is specialized in, and I'm assuming there will be more types, like for example an anti-air icon. And this is where we go back to the unit value thing I mentioned under the Cobra stat card. The M1 Abrams has a little green icon that was referred to as unit value B earlier, whereas the A10s and the M1A1 Abrams CP unit have blue markings. Now this is pure speculation, but seeing as the Cobra at 80 points was a green unit, this could mean that any unit, for example, between between 50 and 99 points is considered of medium cost and marked as green. Now going off the Cobra screenshot, we can see there are actually four tiers of value. Perhaps it goes one to 49, 50 to 99, 100 to 149, and then 150 plus. Again, this is pure speculation, but since the color shows up for enemy units as well, it might just be a quick way for a player to discern what type of units they're facing and how expensive they are, and thus help them in their decision which unit to target first. For now, I think we're going to have to see more screenshots or gameplay to determine any of what I just said is true. When they released their trailer for War Now, I was hanging out in the official Eugen Discord for a little while. I caught some interesting things said by the developers, so let's get into some of that right here. Now, first up, the gameplay will result 
resemble War Game more so than Steel Division, though a lot of Steel Division's improvements will make it into Warner. For example, better AI, which is, I think, very welcome. War Game AI always felt very rushy and wasn't really someone who cared for self-preservation. A big addition and upgrade from Erland Battle to Red Dragon was the addition of a whole naval aspect to the gameplay. Now, personally, I never thought naval combat, especially in PvP, was a great addition, but either way, it was there to be used. The devs confirmed there will not be any navy as part of war. Now, I'm not sure what this has to say about amphibious units, but no big boats or ships or any sort of naval combat is planned. Personally, I gotta say, I prefer this. They can really focus on single player content or multiplayer content, or just generally improving the land and air units and not have to worry and focus on their naval aspect, balancing that, adding more units. Honestly, naval just wasn't as fun or engaging as the air or land combat was in Red Dragon. Then we have the co-founder of Eugen himself, Alexis Le Dressé or Grand Stratagère, confirming there will be mod support, though we will have to see to what degree this will be implemented. In my Broken Arrow video, I talked about how the developers will be adding this editor they use to make missions to the game so the community can go crazy making a bunch of things. I personally would love to see both Broken Arrow and Warno have some sort of Steam Workshop integration, making mod sharing and creating a lot easier. The devs also confirmed that Steel Division type of destruction, where buildings will be completely destructible, will make its way to Warno. This will make infantry combat in cities a lot more interesting, whereas in Red Dragon, you could target a building with dozens of aircraft or artillery. The building would stay alive with the infantry inside of it dying, but here, tactical targeting of buildings will deny the enemy or your forces cover of structures. An interesting mention here is paratroopers. The developers state there is a nice surprise regarding this and that they have found two ways to integrate them into Warden. Now I know Warden Conflict had paratroopers as well, but only as a special call-in using the tactical aid system. Now I'm not really sure how they're going to add this to Warno. I'm not implying there will be some sort of point system where you can call in these special units like paratroopers, but again, they have not said much else about this other than they have found ways to integrate them somehow. Now last but not least, this isn't War Game 4 or Civil Division 1989, though it really feels like a War Game 4, let's be honest here. According to the dev, it's not a direct successor to either game but more sort of a child that they could have made together. With all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Looking at Warno, I am really excited for next year with so many awesome RTS games scheduled to come out. For now, I love to see you in the next one. Cheers!